Well, first, I want to thank you all for being here. I think the, one of the most important things, this is the sixth year, Barry, that you and the chamber have done this. And I remember when we first talked about it, bringing together a community of interest around health and health care. And we need that. We need that very badly. And, and I can go into a number of the, the reasons, and I will a little bit, but I have now been secretary for six and a half years. And uh, those are kind of like dog years. So six and a half times seven is 45, 45 years. And, and um, I, 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 I heard recently that Moses was only in the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> and he died without getting to the promised land. Moses needed a better strategy, but that's um, uh, so what you get after six and a half years of being secretary is a lot of experience. And the, what, in medicine, we used to say experience is what you've got right after you needed it. So um, I can tell you a lot of things that, that we could have done better probably along the way. But uh, as we look at our plate right now, um, I won't harp on this too much, but when I hear all of the things you talk about this morning, the, the technology and, and the systems and all these wonderful ideas, I am struck by the fact that in today's world, we still cannot reliably, consistently, and safely deliver what we already know how to do that know how to everybody. We need your help. As we think about these innovations as a, as a recovering orthopedic surgeon, you know, all of this technology that we picked up, you hear about the training and so forth, it's true. I mean, the nice thing about orthopedics is the hammers don't change when we, but, and the saws don't change, but a lot of it does change and there's this need to reinvent over time as we're, we're doing in the workforce. And with the explosion of knowledge, the things that I learned to do in medical school are largely um, not relevant. Can a physician lead every team? Who is the team leader? What is the skill set? How do we leverage populations of experts when there aren't enough? Psychiatry, mental health providers, substance abuse um, providers. How do, you, how do you create a team and leverage the expertise to meet the needs that we have. If, if you've been asleep, um, you might have missed the fact that we have a mental health crisis in the public sector in Virginia. Huge, huge problems uh, with individuals who have untreated mental illness. We cannot continue to do things the same way that we've been doing them and solve that. Um, who here has noticed that recently we have suddenly recognized that we have an opiate crisis in Virginia? Anybody hear about that? We are losing more Virginians the last three years to opiate overdoses than we are to motor vehicle accidents. Is that news to anybody? Raise your hand if that's news to you. Generally, there's somebody in the audience that hadn't gotten the word. Um, when we look at what happens with that, that starts often with diversion of prescription drugs in kids. We did a school survey this year, 5,800 kids were surveyed, 7.5% said that they've tried prescription opiates without a prescription. 1.4% of kids say they've tried heroin, 1.2% say they are currently using heroin. I guess the difference between 1.4 and 1.2 is they haven't gotten to the second dose yet. What are we going to do with people who are addicted and not yet in recovery? Now, it's easy to say it's their problem. And as I listened to the discussion this morning, I heard what the government should do comes up a couple of times. I think it's important to recognize um, who the government is. It's people like me and Anna and Bob Brink, who's here, Joe Flores is here. Um, Jason Eig is here, Christy Morton. We, we are all collectively, year in and year out, we are the government. And it's something people come in and say, well, if only the government would do this. Um, understand when you come with the solution what you have to deal with. Can we really put things in the state employee health plan? Can we really be doing trials and things as the government and favor one vendor over another? 
These are things that you need to think about. Is it an administrative issue? Is it a state level problem? Or is it a federal level problem? I happen to think that one of the biggest barriers to innovation, you all heard it this morning, is the payment system. As long as everybody over 65 is in Medicare, and Medicare plays, pays fee for service, it's hard for somebody who practices to practice in both worlds, a value-based world and a fee-for-service world. We need your help in these areas. We need your help with mental health. We need your help with opiate and substance abuse. These are things we need your help. So I know that the chamber is beginning their vision, or blueprint 2021. This is a great opportunity for us to talk a little bit about what matters to society. Maybe not my industry, and you know, we talk about us being siloed, um, and we are, and we have been, but so are you. I should say we, we've got our doctors here, and we've got our pharmacists here, and we've got our pharma here, and we've got our insurance companies here, and we've got the tech industry here, and you all come in, not even as a group often, but one by one, offering great advice on what we should do next. It impacts everybody. So your opportunity here is to get together, to get together, to use the, the blueprint process like was done last time, to impact what happens and, and help us a little bit. You've heard about population health this morning and individual health here. You know, we really are, do need to be in the population health business. I'd refer you to the Virginia Department of Health website. We have a document called Healthy Virginia Plan. And it's a plan for well-being. And when we look at our measures, what are we looking at measuring now? Are children ready to go to kindergarten? How much, how much money have you all spent over the years, Barry, encouraging good K-12 education? But what happens to literally hundreds of thousands of children in Virginia who are maybe born prematurely, don't have verbal stimulation early in life, do not have the brain development, and then they go to school and can't learn? And SOL doesn't help that. Firing the teacher doesn't help that. But we know that education, graduation, employment is synonymous with health later in life. We know and have known for years that, the, has, has anybody heard of the term trauma? As an orthopedic surgeon six years ago, I thought it was when you got hit by a car. But it turns out when you're a child and there's poverty and domestic violence and hunger and divorce, homelessness, that's trauma to your brain. And it's manifest in changes that are easily seen on MRI scans. And the evidence shows that later in life, forget about the behavior issues in school, but later in life, the diabetes will show up earlier, the heart disease will show up earlier. We need to get these kids off to a good start. So think about your employment. What do you want from your employees? Anybody going to have be in a business that's going to be here in 20 years? Anybody planning to be in business 20 years from now? Where your, where's your workforce going to come from? Are we going to have a healthy, productive workforce, healthy, productive Virginians? And that starts very early. So look at the plan for well-being and think about how we can align our work and how you can bring your technology and your gadgets and your whiz-bang things to work in an area that will benefit us long term. They're called social determinants of health. First Lady always says, how can a kid be hungry to learn when she's just plain hungry. Somebody else's problem, let the government handle that. That's us. We aren't a bunch of harebrained people out there with crazy ideas. We're doing the job the General Assembly has told us to do. We're trying to balance the budgets. We're trying to deal with recession and decreases in income. We need your help. So please engage with the chamber your other organizations, come to us with solutions that help meet the General Assembly's problems, the responsibility to the public. You know, having a million and one Virginians who can't pay for health care is not going to buy any of your services. <clears throat> Medicaid expansion would bring $200 million a year for mental health services immediately. 
which are badly needed. It impacts your business. You are paying for this. So I don't want to be completely a downer about this. I hope that, that you think about how we can solve these problems. And there are solutions out there. There are resources out there that work. We do have a lot of ingenuity. We have the innovation. But help us solve the society problems while you're bringing your own businesses along. Look at the plan for well-being. See how the chamber can align with that. It's a lot in it. It may have pieces that appeal to you and others that you just plain disagree with. That's the way it will work. Get in your communities. Bill will kill me. Bill Ermendinger will kill me if I don't mention the uh, issues with early childhood. Think about how we bring kids along. And be sure that they are ready for life. And this is where I think we'd, I'd like to see us think collectively going forward. Now, Barry, good conference. Look forward to working with you. Um, we are happy to take questions, um, not now, but later. And um, so you can get on with the program. But very, thank you for being here and listening for a few minutes. I appreciate it.